WatchOS 9 is now available. Here are more than 50 new features, changes, and enhancements in this massive new update. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here, and as I said, Apple has released WatchOS 9. It is now available. You can download it yourself on your Apple Watch. In this video, I'm going to walk you through a hands-on of more than 50 new features, changes, and enhancements coming in this update. So let's go ahead and get into this. Our tour of WatchOS 9 begins with the new watch faces. There are three new watch faces here with WatchOS 9, including this new lunar face. I'm going to go ahead and tap and hold and check it out in a little bit more detail. Lunar face, you can see we can choose from three different calendars, Chinese, Hebrew, as well as Islamic. So you can choose whichever calendar you'd like to use. We can swipe over, we can change how we view the time, so whether we want digital or analog. One more over, we can change the color of the second dial there. There's plenty of color options to choose from. And lastly, there are complications. There are four complications supported on this watch face. The next face that we can look at going back is the Metropolitan face. This is definitely one of my favorites. It has four complications on it. There's various styles that you can choose from to really dial, get it, dial, dial this in to your likings. There's background colors, colors for the whole thing, um, rainbow, lots of different ones in here, and four complications. Then the last option is the playtime phase, kind of fun. Doesn't support any complications, but definitely a kid-friendly phase. And as you tap on the little characters, they'll actually come back and react as you poke them. And I love that you can actually poke them enough, they'll come back and bump into the screen and react like they're actually hitting that front glass. So really neat little animations here. This was a partnership with Joy Fulton, who's a Chicago-based artist. Really neat, fun face for kids. Besides the new faces, there are some changes to existing faces. So we scrolled left the portraits face. This one now can support pet portraits as well as human portraits. And it'll do things like overlay the text and the images on the background depending on how they were shot. So some really neat effects for pet portraits and over with dogs as well as cats here with watchOS 16. And it even supports landscapes as well. Moving over, the astronomy face has been updated. It's not a new face, but it has definitely improved remarkably. So again, you can choose a few different things, the time, the view, you have the earth, moon, and the solar system as a whole. Choose whichever one you'd like. You can go with the earth view style, how you want to see in more detail, similar to the new lock screens on the iPhone. And then we have complications, the top and bottom, just two of them there. So these ones are just really gorgeous. A lot of new imagery are joining these faces. They can show current collapse coverage which is pretty cool um, and as you scroll through you can see how the time of day affects the globe really cool I love this they really did a great job on these new astronomy faces other ones were updated including modular modular compact XL breathe all have new options like background options I like this these are these new uh, gradient backgrounds if I tap on edit go over here to colors. There are several gradient backgrounds that Apple has pre-designed that you can choose from. So neat new background color options for several new or existing watch faces. Another change with watchOS 9 is the Nike faces are now available to everybody. These used to be exclusive to Nike versions of the Apple Watch, which means uh, for me, I love the stainless steel version of the Apple Watch. I could never use the Nike faces because they were never available on stainless steel, but now they are. So if you have a regular version of Apple Watch, you can check out the Nike Analog, Nike Bounce, Nike Compact, Nike Digital, and Nike Hybrid faces on your Apple Watch. Plus you can change your Apple Watch face just as you can change your lock screen and a home screen based on the focus mode you are in. There's some great new additions to sleep tracking on Apple Watch with watchOS 9. The Apple Watch will now use the gyroscope as well as the heart rate sensor to monitor you throughout the night and track your core, REM, deep, and awake sleep cycles. Beyond that, it can show comparison graphs on the iPhone inside of the health app that'll match your heart rate and respiratory rate compared to how you were sleeping. 
Finally, Apple has a new way to get in and out of sleep mode. So here we're in sleep mode already. We're gonna put the Apple Watch to sleep. You can see we've got the sleep face going on. It's very dim. To get out of this, you used to have to twist the digital crown. Now you must hold the digital crown to be able to access your watch when you're sleeping. That way it doesn't inadvertently wake up in the middle of the night and wake you up. Apple added a whole new app with watchOS 9, and that's the Medications app. Medications will help you track your medications and vitamins that you take every day, or every few days, or every week, or however often it may be. It'll include alerts on your watch to let you know when it's time to take your medication. It'll let you know which ones you've logged. You can view any of your medications and view your schedule when you should take them or manually log them one by one. It's really easy to set this up over on your iPhone and keep track of it here on your Apple Watch. Before getting into that, I have to call out one of our sponsors, Adorama. Apple Insider followers can save literally hundreds of dollars on Apple products by applying code APINSIDER at checkout. But you must follow these steps to get these great deals. Use the link down below in the description or go to prices.appleinsider.com and follow any of the links on the Adorama column for the products that you're shopping for. Thanks again to Adorama for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back to our content. Apple has basically entirely redesigned the Compass app here in watchOS 9. First, you can zoom in and out of the actual view to view three different versions of the Compass app. So here's one version of it. If we use the digital crown, we can scroll up and I can exit the second version that I can't show because it has my longitude and latitude. And then the last version, again, that has my bearing there as where I'm facing. You can pull up this menu here on the left with additional information. You can tap on done there. I can tap in the lower left hand corner where I can access any waypoints that I've added. So like have my parked car or anything like that. And this supports backtrack. Backtrack allows you to head out into the wilderness and keep track of where you're going. That way you can always find your way back. This is very handy for hikers. If you've ever gone out west and wandered around a little bit, it can definitely be scary. So backtrack is a really cool new feature that I'm excited for here on watchOS 9. For women, the cycle tracking app has been updated and it can now alert you if you have an irregular pattern for your cycle. So if you haven't had one in a certain period of time, you've had them too frequently, or any other irregularities that the cycle app is able to detect after you've logged quite a bit of data, you'll get an alert about those just to make sure you're on top of it. One of the biggest apps to get upgrade is the workouts app and there is a serious ton of changes to talk about with workouts. So first up, there are new workout views. So if I choose something here, uh, they do decent amount. How about indoor cycle? Let's go ahead and start this workout. Now we can scroll using the digital crown to go to some different views. This one here is the new heart rate zones. It can show you your max and resting heart rate to create personalized zones for during your workout. Or you can set zones manually inside of the settings here to get the ones that you want. So as you get your heart rate up, you can move into those different zones, how much calories you're burning and everything else. You can kind of focus on your biggest burn ones from your kind of starting out, your warm ups to your cool downs and everything in between, or if you're pushing things just too hard. If we keep scrolling down, we can see other views in this. This is another new one. This is the activity rings view. You can see your actual activity rings while in your workout very handy. You don't have to jump to your home screen or lock screen or your watch face, anything like that to check your rings. You can see them while in the workout. Seems you know small, but it's been a problem at least for me. Some workouts have additional views. For example, this outdoor run. You can see we have our zones there. This is a new pacer one that has additional information. You can see things like splits, segments, and that kind of stuff. If we scroll down, we have the elevation face. Now this one will show your max elevation as well as your total gain, and it can visualize them. This will apply for outdoor runs, outdoor cycle, outdoor wheelchair run pace, hiking, outdoor walk, and outdoor wheelchair walk pace. You can see it visualized there along the top. And if we keep scrolling, we have our activity rings that we looked at before. If we take an activity like outdoor run and tap on the ellipses there, you can see we can choose those different types of workouts that existed before, but now we have so many more options. You can scroll down and see all these different types of workouts, including custom workouts. You can create custom workouts with a repeating set of intervals based on time, distance, or an open goal. 
jump into here. You can see I want to work, recovery, and you can just keep repeating those before adding a cooldown at the end. You can have the length, anything that you want to set, and it'll automatically walk you through this using the updated pacer. Now, if we go up and choose something else, just like maybe the open one, I do this one quite a bit, I can choose my alerts that I get, so my pace ones, all of these can be customized now. And if we go back, workout views, you can see we have the views, we can preview them right here at the top, or I can edit views and choose and customize all of these. So you can see we have our uh, different views, we have our heart rate ones, and you can choose whether or not to include them just with this little toggle here. So on or off based on what I actually want to see in my workouts. You can see there's the updated elevation one. There's a ton of different ones here. And you just choose which ones you want or don't want to show up in your workout. And you can do these on a per workout basis. So set them for running, for cycling, anything like that. For running, it'll also now monitor stride length, ground contact time, and vertical oscillation. For multi-sport tracking, this has a bunch of new enhancements including for triathlons and duathlons. It can automatically move between swimming, cycling, and running, and will monitor the transitions between each of those legs. It'll automatically move between them and you don't have to manually do it. For pool swim, this can now automatically detect when you're using a kickboard. If you're an Apple Fitness Plus user and you're using your Apple Watch with Apple Fitness Plus, there will be new on-screen call-outs that alert you about things like when you should have high intensity or be cooling down. Been testing that for a while as well and it works really nicely when I'm using it with the Apple TV. You also have the newfound ability to race yourself. If you take the same path time and time again, you can compare your results to how you were actually racing last time and you can get pacer alerts to let you know if you are falling behind your previous rate. The calendar app was updated, allowing you to add a new event directly into the calendar. And you can change the view options, including up next, day, or list view. When you're going and adding a new event, you can tap the plus button, add your title, location, when it is, and everything else that you need right here directly from your Apple Watch without having to grab your iPhone. The reminders app was updated. Now you can go ahead and edit these reminders that you've added. You can add notes, change the title, add a date, time, repeat, tags, and locations. A bunch of information that you could not add before directly from the Apple Watch. In the podcast app, there's a few changes to talk about here too. So first, you now have the ability to search. So you can search for your favorite podcast like HomeKit Insider, if I had to suggest one. So you can search for your podcast. You can also use the new Listen Now tab where you can find new and exciting things to listen to. So there's a list to choose from, a bunch of ways to find new stuff to listen to, or the up next queue that you were already listening to once you just went to continue where you left off. Again, like that HomeKit Insider podcast. And the last thing you can do with the updated podcast app is follow and unfollow shows. For any 22-year-old or older that's been diagnosed with AFib, you can now see AFib history. You can get weekly notifications with how much time you've spent in AFib, highlights to show what days and times your AFib is at its highest, and it'll track lifestyle factors that may contribute. These lifestyle factors include exercise, sleep, weight, alcohol, and more that are all tracked inside of the health app and you can share your results with a PDF to your doctor for further discussion. Another useful new feature is low power mode. You can tap on the battery indicator here inside a control center, and you'll see how much battery life you have remaining. But below that, you'll see low power mode. This used to be power reserve mode. Power reserve mode was replaced with this updated low power mode. When you go to enable low power mode, your Apple Watch will automatically slow things down in the background. It'll turn off background sensors such as your heart rate monitoring and SpO2 measurements, and it'll turn things lower such as how frequently your watch is checking in via Wi-Fi or cellular. It'll still work via Bluetooth and you'll still have notifications coming in from your phone. But if you're not near your phone, some things may be delayed. But you can drastically improve the battery life of your Apple Watch when low power mode is enabled. You can turn it on right here from Control Center and just another tap. You can turn it off again when you're ready to conserve battery life. You should be able to get around twice the battery life with low power mode turned on depending on the Apple Watch model you have. Build as an accessibility feature, you can mirror your Apple Watch to your iPhone. 
It's helpful if you're trying to explain somebody what to do or just for technical assistance. When actively using your Apple Watch, there are new redesigned notifications that come in that only pop in on part of your screen. Instead of taking over your entire screen, there'll be a small little banner right at the top to not inconvenience you as you're still actively using your watch. The dock of Apple Watch has been updated and we will now show applications that are actively running inside of the background, though you can still go into settings and changes to your favorites if you'd prefer. Apple Watch Cellular Models will now support international roaming. That's also a new feature here with Apple Watch and WatchOS 9. There's support for Bluetooth keyboards on Apple Watch, and cardio recovery is tracked in the health app over on iPhone. So that wraps it up. That is a lot of changes, people. I am particularly excited about the changes to watch faces as well as the redesigned notifications when you're using a watch. It's massively improved compared to that full thing taking over the screen. I like what Apple has done here and I'm really excited for the new Apple Watches as well. Stay tuned to Apple Insider for all of the details on Apple's newest wearables.